I'm not a software. Enter that. Developer. This is absolutely. Enter that. The best. <laughs> the capital of France is. Enter that. Paris. Dog is to puppy as cat is to. Enter that. Kitten. For it is in giving that we. Enter that. Receive. Awesome. Let's jump over. Oh, we better sleep her. Let's jump over to Semantic. Pinocchio was a real. Enter that. Boy. My favorite star is. Enter that. The moon. Trees are green in. Enter that. The spring. National health. Enter that. Insurances. Chocolate is made from. Enter that. Cocoa beans. Awesome. How amazing is it to live in 2022? We've got voice in, send it to GPT-3, voice out using both free Mac OS Say and also the very expensive Synantic.io. We're actually nearly at the two year anniversary of GPT-3 and back in July 2020, Paul Graham said, hackers are fascinated by GPT-3. To everyone else, it seems a toy. Patents seem familiar to anyone? <laughs> you can list everything from the internet to crypto to oh, smartphones, for example, where there's a very rapid curve of adoption. But those early adopters, they're wondering where the hell everyone is. <laughs> I don't know why we're taking so long even to document this level of application the capability that we have to go and interact with GPT-3. So we're doing this by the CLI. This has been available for a while. If you are not a Python developer or a Ruby developer, or you don't like code at all, you can actually do this with no code or low code, depending on your definition. I've done this through the command line interface. Looking for the instructions, lifearchitect.ai slash CLI. This will take you all the way through it. We're leveraging this amazing install GPT-3 CLI here by Crazy Python, better known as James. It's ready to go. It's really quite useful in what it does, and we're going to be using it quite heavily. So back in the script, Let's just run this by itself. Give it, um, let's say, red, blue. Put this input of red, blue, and only returning two tokens here. You want to get this working before you try anything else. So it's just one line. Well, it kind of <laughs> jumps across multiple lines, but just making sure that this is going out. We're using one of the simpler engines, Curie, and it's uh, giving us a return of green. Once you've got that working, I know that it's gonna be really easy for you to test the say part as well. So let's do say, instead of grabbing the output as a variable, we'll just type it in here so you can see green. how simple that is. Awesome. And there are actually about 20 plus voices available on Mac OS, just completely built into the CLI, completely free. Uh, recommend that you play around with it. Let's have a look from inside this script line by line. So we're running the whole script over and over until the user cancels. So we've got a while loop there. 
we're echoing a prompt for the user to type something in, then we're reading that user input into a variable. I've put a couple of time marks here so that I can measure kind of with a stopwatch just how long everything is taking. You'll see that the semantic processing takes a lot longer than the very basic Mac OS say, but we're measuring both of them to see what it's like. Then the input that you just saw with a few variables, if you have not come across PB copy and PB paste, it's worth having a look at. It basically captures the end of a command in the CLI. So the kind of the result of the command rather than the command itself. Really useful PB copy and PB paste, putting those into the GPT output variable. Echoing that to the screen, got timers still going on here. If you're using Synantic, then it will go away and use their CLI, which is amazing. And we're gonna just mark both of those out. If you're not using Synantic, you will just use Mac OS's say. And that's really it, done, run the loop again. Jump into that script one more time and you'll see that it's taking our input here me to the moon and let me play among the come on Kira, you can do it stars Pressing enter <laughs> away it goes fantastic you'll see that the gpt3 query takes about 1.3 seconds and the uh we actually don't measure the voice time here because mac os should be instant and i can't find a way to put that inside the loop anyway if you compare that with Semantic, so I'll just comment out the macOS version and keep the Semantic instead, restart that script. Where am I? I'm in. We'll send that to GPT-3. It says the middle in 0 0.8 seconds. The now middle. Sending it through to Semantic, which takes a little bit longer, 3.5 seconds there, so a total of 4.4 seconds. And that processing time there is before the web starts playing. So sometimes this can be uh, long, sometimes this can be short. It really depends. Same with GPT-3. It depends on the engine, depends on the entire prompt, and it depends on how their service is feeling at the time. Awesome, guys. A really quick one today just to have a look. You can build out this script. It's available for free, um, again, from lifearchitect.ai slash CLI but it's probably like a very beginning foundation. There's so many fancy things you could do here. Even with the Mac part, you could use the different voices. You could pass in different engines. You could build the prompt out because there's no prompt in there at the moment. It's just taking user input. You could get really, really fancy with this, but I wanted to provide a beginning stage because it looks like no one has done this. And there's a lot of call for, let me just use it on my laptop. And given that you're getting a few thousand tokens for free with your starter for OpenAI, $18 worth or so, then you might as well use that for something and having it right here, whether you're using it by voice or by text, is a really, really quick way to play around with the different engines and to have a chatbot if that's something that you want to do. Awesome. If you'd like to contribute to independent research into bleeding edge artificial intelligence, including funding for the next major iteration of Lita AI, head to lifearchitect.ai slash gift.